Welcome into a very special edition of Jambart TV. This week we're celebrating our 90th anniversary. And before we get into our stories, I would like to formally introduce our um, new news anchor, Krista Ritz. Hi, I'm Krista. I'm so excited to be here and to be part of the Jambart family. We're going to get into some Jambart history. Jambart TV in Youngstown, Ohio. This is your student news. With Kelsey Norris, Monica Kurgeon, Gabrielle Owens, Abigail Cloutier, Thomas Kushner, and Ben Lulai. This is Jambar TV. Our alumni are helping us celebrate the Jambar's 90th anniversary with their favorite Jambar moments. Former managing editor Justin Weir spent two and a half years with the Jam Bar before graduating in 2018. He covered notable events like local 2016 presidential campaign rallies. That whole experience was just great because like, like interact with like NPR reporters and CNN reporters and stuff like in the press pens at those things and it was just a unique experience and got some really good clips out of it. Former managing editor Brian McCullough wrote his first byline in late 1986. He would go on to cover sports events like the 1987 Blizzard Bowl, with the Penguins defeating rival Zips under coach Jim Trussell. He brought the band in, and Coach Trussell brought down the team. Uh, and it was kind of, you know, if you're in college, but there's still a little bit of high school in all of us when we're at that time. And there was definitely that kind of mood. And we ended up winning. You know, we beat Acker that night, which was a great uh, feature to it. Former editor-in-chief Deborah Flora Shawless wrote for the Jam Bar for two and a half years before graduating in 1989. She covered events like YSU's 80th anniversary with a special issue diving into the school's origin and history. They asked me about some of the historic things, and when I looked at it through that lens, I realized that we did live in some interesting times there in the mid to late 80s with uh, things that were happening that were unique to that time, and some of the, the recurring themes. YSU student media has come a long way from just print since its inception 90 years ago. Today, it hosts a television studio and student radio station. In 2019, the communications department worked with the Jambar staff to create the Jambar's first ever news show. First executive producer, Alyssa Weston, discussed how the experience has shaped her. Just people who are, you know, whether they're sports athletes or um, you know, celebrity in some other way to kind of have the chance to sit down and interview them is always something I'll take with me forever and be forever grateful for. A YSU graduate named Billy Clark achieved his dreams of becoming a published author right out of college. He graduated in 2019 with a degree in communication studies. His collection of original poems details how cerebral palsy has affected his life. But then we rarely touch on the mental health aspect, and that's a massive hurdle that a lot of disabled individuals go through and really, really suffer in silence because they don't know that it's a universal thing. They think it's just themselves. So I really want it to be as raw as possible and pull back the curtain and be like, no, I suffer from these things as well. Um, and, and just be as honest about my feelings, about who I am, and, uh, you know, just be uh, real with it. Clark's book is now available for purchase on Amazon. It's called The Ever-So-Accurate Tales of a Not-So-Average Man, The Testament of a Modern Disabled Man. Former Jambar staff are scattered everywhere, but 1993 editor-in-chief and alumna Jennifer Caller stayed local. She works to bring positive change to the community as the public information officer for Mahoning Valley Children's Services. She reminisced on her time at YSU. I've always loved Youngstown State. I've done well at Youngstown State. I had a great time. I have been very uh, fortunate that I found really great jobs in my field in Youngstown. I feel like if you can find a job in Youngstown, a good job, you can find a job anywhere. Because if you can't find a job in Youngstown in your field, um, you're doing really well. We had the basement of Fedor Hall where not only we worked, 2016 YSU graduate Marissa Ferris worked at the Jam Bar from 2010 to 2013. She thinks back to how much the Jam Bar has changed since her time in office. And we had the basement of Fedor Hall where 
not only we worked, but a lot of us, you know, in between classes would go and hang out there and all that, all that good stuff. And, you know, I had, I got to have so many really cool experiences while I worked there. And it's just so cool to like, kind of like look back on. Up next, Thomas Kushner brings us an update on COVID-19 cases and precautions on campus. Thanks, Kelsey. I'm Thomas Kushner from the Jambar Newsroom with your weekly coronavirus update. Over winter break, YSU continued updating their coronavirus dashboard. Most recently, they've recorded 33 additional coronavirus cases as of January 2nd. As part of a new recommendation, YSU will be requiring students traveling from hotspot states to quarantine for a 14-day period. Students returning to the dorms on campus were required to show proof of a negative test result before they could get the keys back to their rooms. However, even with a negative test result, some students will be required to quarantine still for that 14-day period. This semester, YSU will be randomly testing a percentage of students, faculty, and staff as part of a new contact tracing measure. For the latest in YSU and coronavirus, check out the YSU coronavirus dashboard and the coronavirus information webpage. The environment in the hospital can be very intense for a patient. Being able to put a smile on their face brightens up my day. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is nursing. What I love about studying nursing is that it takes you out of the classroom and into the lab. It's really hands-on. The professors here push you to be your absolute best, so if you want it, you gotta work hard for it. I am so excited about my future. I'm Shantiana, and I am why I'm proud. You're here to be part of something bigger, to make things happen. For you, college is about knowledge being shared, and learning experiences that aren't limited to the classroom. On campus, you wanna matter. It's about engaging every day, building relationships with students, with mentors, with the community, in the heart of a reinvented city. We are that something bigger. We are Youngstown State University and proud. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and Proud. Hey kid, you wanna try some exercise? Wait, what? What's going on right now? Yeah man, exercise. I don't know. I don't know if I should even be talking to you right now. It's got lots of benefits. Mm. Okay. The benefits of exercise include increased levels of energy, higher quality of sleep, better muscle and bone strength, improved memory, and clearer skin. Welcome back to Jambar TV special 90th anniversary edition. My name is Abigail Cloutier, and today I'm here with George Nelson, the editor-in-chief of the summer of 1986 and a current business journal political editor. George, uh, what was your role at the Jam Bar through the years, and what's your professional background now? Can you tell us about that a little bit? Um, I started the Jam Bar pretty much the moment I walked onto the campus in 82, uh, hanging around the uh, production offices, eventually started writing. Uh, about a year into it, I started doing photography, uh, basically worked on paste up uh, production editing, uh, I held most of the major positions at the paper at one point or another, uh, summer news editor twice, copy editor for a year, edited the uh, feature and entertainment pages for a while, and generally served as a, as a general assignment reporter, mostly focusing on news. So you held a lot of different roles and you developed a lot of different skills through your time at the Jam Bar. How do you feel like that helped you succeed in your career or develop your career later on after college? Well, obviously, uh, well, a lot of my time has been at the Business Journal uh, where I've held reporting and, and editorial jobs of, you know, basically you, being at the Jam Bar, you learn things like 
how to write a headline uh, based on the on the amount of space you have. Uh, you learn discipline. Uh, you know, you need obviously you need to meet deadlines uh, to get the paper out when it's supposed to be out. So what, um, through the years, is one of your favorite experiences or moments as a Jambar staffer? Uh, one of the highlights was probably my sophomore year when uh, Cliff Stout, um, football fans will remember this, uh, particularly Pittsburgh Steelers fans, uh, he was named to sub for Terry Bradshaw, the Steelers quarterback. Uh, he was a YSU alum, so feeling very full of myself, I called and arranged an interview uh, with him. And rather than doing it by the phone, we actually went down to the Pittsburgh Steelers locker room to, to do the interview. Uh, one of the highlights of that day was actually meeting, you know, the original owner of the, of the Steelers that day. So that was pretty cool. That's awesome. I'm a Steelers fan myself, but um, experiences like that through student media how do you think that impacted the importance of student media for you and the future of student media? I mean, doing that kind of work when you're a student, uh, that's what you need to do to be able to go out and, and function once you're, once you're looking for a job. I mean, yeah, you're going to start out writing obits and covering the you know, village council meetings in some place you've probably never heard of when you start out, but you know eventually you're going to you're going to build on those skills, and you're going to be doing more important or covering more important things, uh, more significant things, at least in a broader area. Not that those things aren't important to the people in those communities, and and that's something else that's important to remember when you're going out and doing stories and talking to these people. Their issues are important to them. You know, every time I go out and talk to a business owner, that's their livelihood. That is that is important to them, even if it's you know just a, a little shop in downtown Youngstown. I've talked to a, a lot of small company owners over the years. Talked to company uh, owners of companies that uh, have several hundred employees, but those are all important. And how do you think? media production and student media has changed um, over the years and since your time at the Jam Bar? Uh, I would have to say drastically. I think when I was at the Jam Bar, my early years was when we were first entering into computer pagination. Uh, before then, we had typesetters who you would turn in your edited stories to, who would type up the uh, stories um, into you know, film, uh, film sheets of uh, you know of the with the correct column width that you're going to use on the page. You would uh, paste them on using wax. Uh, you would have to rather than just drawing a photo off of a disc or other media to place on the page in the digital file. You'd have to use a production camera to resize the photo, uh, which would have to be developed. So you're talking. Uh, you know, at least uh, several minutes of, of darkroom chemistry before you even have a photo that you can look at. And that photo, once it's shot, then is pasted onto the page. Student media has definitely come a long way since, you know, the 90 years that the Jam Bar has started, but I appreciate your time coming in today. Before we get to arts and entertainment, we're going to hear from some Jambar alumni and advisors about their favorite moments with the Jambar and its 90 year history. Stay tuned. One story that I pretty much never will forget, and that story um, is the story about Jamel Johnson, the YSU student who was um, shot and killed at um, at a, at a house just off campus. Actually, I believe the house was on campus. Uh, Jamel was, uh, I guess, shielding himself um, in front of others uh, and actually saved you know, quite a few lives that night, but he uh, tragically lost his life. And that was a story that, as uh, editor-in-chief, um, is just a story that I'll never forget. Um, coming into to class that, that following morning, getting a call from 
uh, my managing editor, Lamar Salter at the time, uh, basically saying, hey, uh, have you heard what happened? And I said, no, you know, and he filled me in. And, uh, you know, from that day, I mean, that whole day, I'll never forget it. It's kind of like the day uh, when somebody asks you, you know, where were you on 9-11? Uh, that's kind of what it was like for me, you know, drove in the class. Uh, Lamar and I kind of assembled the team. Um, it wasn't a production day. Uh, so we kind of assembled the team and had constant, uh, like 24-7 coverage of the uh, of the tragic event. Stories published online. We ended up running a special edition the following day. Um, and it was just a, an edition that covered all aspects of that story. Um, so that's probably the one story that I'll kind of have in my mind forever. Happy birthday, Jambar. 90 years is a long time. And I'm proud to be uh, part of the uh, 90 years uh, f at Youngstown State University. So go Penguins. Favorite story that I worked on for the Jam Bar would probably be the first one uh, that I worked on as a Jam Bar workshopper uh, just because, you know, it was exciting to actually be uh, doing the thing that I was in school to learn. Uh, you know, it was going to be published. I talked to real people. Uh, it was about some kind of administrative change for the staff, I think, like for the staff of the school. I believe that's what the story was. I don't really remember too many of the details. I just remember the feeling of, um, wow, this is really happening. I'm really doing something cool. Uh, I heard somebody say once that a reporter's favorite story is the one that they're working on now. I think that was the case. It's hard to pinpoint one specific story that I worked on that I enjoyed. I really enjoyed working on all of them. And the great thing about working on a new story is that you learn something new each day. My name is Mary Beth Earnhardt and I have been the GMBAR advisor for about a decade um, on and off since I started at Youngstown State. And it has been my pleasure to work with the students who have um, told the campus stories um, and represented what being YM proud is really about. Uh, they work hard, they win awards, they go on to great things, um, they break news, and they tell stories of students and faculty and all the accomplishments um, that we hold dear as members of this community. It's not always easy. Um, the stories they tell aren't always flattering, but the fact that these students come here and find a voice and use it for the betterment of this university is something that I'm incredibly proud of. Um, if you're a journalism faculty member, such as myself, uh, something happens to your brain early on where you start to count the years since you've been here by the names of the students who run the student newspaper. So the 90th year is my Kelsey Abigail year, um, but they're not the first. Um, but they're doing an outstanding job and I just wanted to thank all the students now and all the students in the past and all the faculty and all the sources and all of the wonderful YSU students who've read the Jambar um, for what they've done to keep our legacy alive and to make us uh, Jambar proud. As a former quarterback here at Youngstown State, I understand what it takes to be the very best. By becoming a member of the Penguin Club, you can help provide the support necessary for all YSU student athletes to be their very best. You'll receive great benefits like priority season tickets, game day parking, and access to hospitality rooms. To join the Penguin Club, call 330-941-1YSU or go to YSUsports.com. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and Proud. You're not waiting to see what the world has in store for you. It's more about what you have in store for the world. All you need is the opportunity. All you need are the resources of a large university and the advantages of a personalized academic setting where you can experience new worlds in the arts and sciences, business and education, and make them your own. 
We are where you shape your future. We are Youngstown State University and proud. You're looking to your future, preparing for your goals, and they're closer than you think. Because here, success is part of the plan. It's a place where academic and social opportunities are meant to prepare you for life, not just the next four years. You'll be equipped to face new challenges and turn hard work into a career. You're ready for your success to take root. And here's where it starts. We are Youngstown State University and proud. Welcome back to Jambar TV's special 90th anniversary show. I'm Gabrielle Lawrence. Local artist Bob Barco is probably best known for painting Youngstown's murals and YSU's Pete the Penguin fire hydrants. But before that, he was a cartoonist for the Jambar. He created the long-running and popular de detective cartoon Shadow Rider for the paper. When they were tearing this down, there was a big hole in the, ba you know, of the basement of the church. And there was this door that just kind of remember driving by and you could see the foundation opened up. And there was a screen tile wall and there was just this door that just like kind of went into the earth. And for some reason that kind of inspired me, oh, oh what's in there and, and what could it, you know, what could that be high? On Wednesday, January 14th, 1931, students of Youngstown University released a small hand-drawn pamphlet. Over 90 years later, it remains a staple of the university, but looks more than a little different. Douglas Campbell has more on the Jambar's design history. In the 1930s, the Jam Bar was a six-page pamphlet with two columns filled with school bulletins. As new students designed for the paper, the pamphlet became a newspaper in a broadsheet format. Stories were integrated onto the front page along with the Jam Bar's masthead. Folios were placed to the left and right side of pages. Four to five columns were placed onto a page, and visual elements such as photographs and advertisements were included. Those elements would continue to change over the years. Every designer has their own style. Some of them pull from things that were already there. Some of them create something new. I got the pleasure of creating something entirely new because we moved to the tabloid. Some alumni designers at YSU have found careers working for other publications. You know, working at the Jam Bar was kind of like a hybrid of design and writing, and that's what I've been doing my whole, pretty much my whole career, you know. As the Jam Bar modernized, designers in the early 2000s switched from using Quark to Adobe InDesign for formatting the paper. The paper printed in color, changed to a tabloid, then back to broadsheet. Kind of really owe my my uh, experiences at the Jam Bar and learning the basics of journalism and everything um, to that program. And I don't think I would be where I'm at today without having that experience. The Jam Bar designs are available to view now on Mog's Digital Archives website. Ne up next, Trey Turner and Ben Lou Lai update us on basketball and look back on 90 years of Jambar sports coverage. So stay tuned. The communication department is much more than media or delivering a speech. The YSU communication department offers programs in telecommunication, journalism, and communication studies. We inspire creativity. We encourage each student's passion. We explore new and advanced technologies that connect the human race. The communication programs at YSU ensure that every student is prepared and experienced for the outside workforce for life after YSU. Join the Jam Bar and find your voice when you tell the next big story. Become a host of Rookery Radio and gain hands-on experience. Or get involved with TV productions like Light the Wick, Penguin Rundown, and Jam Bar TV. YSU's communication department is much more than a department, an education, or a degree. It's a home for passionate individuals, for students to find and pursue what they love. You're here to be part of something bigger, to make things happen. For you, college is about knowledge being shared, and learning experiences that aren't limited to the classroom. On campus, you want to matter. It's about engaging every day, building relationships with students, with mentors, with the community, in the heart of a reinvented city. We are that something bigger. We are Youngstown State University and proud.
As a former quarterback here at Youngstown State, I understand what it takes to be the very best. By becoming a member of the Penguin Club, you can help provide the support necessary for all YSU student athletes to be their very best. You'll receive great benefits like priority season tickets, game day parking, and access to hospitality rooms. To join the Penguin Club, call 330-941-1YSU or go to YSUsports.com. Welcome back to Jambar TV. Over the holidays, YSU men's and women's basketball both began their seasons. The women delayed their start due to a positive COVID-19 test in the team's Tier 1 bubble. Opening their season, January 1st, the women got off to a rough 0-3 start, but won Saturday versus Oakland for the first one of the season. The men won three of the last four contests, giving them a record of 6-6. Six six. Friday's 74-72 win versus Wright State was one of the most exciting games of the year on a last-second layup by Garrett Covington. Both teams play again Friday and Saturday. With uh... For a 9th anniversary of the Jam Bar, we sat down with a former Jam Bar sports journalist to talk more about one of his most memorable events. YSU women's basketball at Cincinnati. I, it was awesome. I mean, being down on the floor at a major Division I school, same with when I went to Louisville for YSU basketball men's. Um, I mean, it's really cool just being down on the floor, seeing a different side of things. There are some strange and unique mascots for universities across the United States. Some of my favorites are the UC Santa Cruz Banana Slugs and the St. Louis Billikens. But there is one dear to our hearts at YSU, the Penguins. This week in YSU Sports History, we detail how Youngstown State got the nickname Penguins. The origins of the nickname are unclear, but the best guess comes from a men's basketball game in 1933. The opposing head coach commented the YSU players were stomping on the floor and swinging their arms like penguins. The first use of penguins in reference to YSU players was in the December 15, 1933 edition of the Jam Bar. As of today, Youngstown State is the only Division I university to have the nickname Penguins. Thank you for tuning in to this special edition of Jam Bar TV. We don't have an episode next week, but we'll be back in two weeks for our regular scheduled program. I'm Ben Lulai. And I'm Trey Turner. Stay safe, Penguins. YSU Foundation and the Jane F. Lamb Charitable Foundation. Thank you. You're not waiting to see what the world has in store for you. It's more about what you have in store for the world. All you need is the opportunity. All you need are the resources of a large university and the advantages of a personalized academic setting where you can experience new worlds in the arts and sciences, business and education and make them your own. We are where you shape your future. We are Youngstown State University and proud. As a former quarterback here at Youngstown State, I understand what it takes to be the very best. By becoming a member of the Penguin Club, you can help provide the support necessary for all YSU student athletes to be their very best. You'll receive great benefits like priority season tickets, game day parking, and access to hospitality rooms. To join the Penguin Club, call 330-941-1YSU or go to YSUsports.com. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and proud. <laughs>